The first part is the lightning talks. We have four talks here, each five minutes, and we have the questions right after the talks. So keep your questions till the end of all the four lightning talks, and we have five minutes of questions, and then uh, we do the room change. And so we're going to start uh, with a talk, Uses of Native Language in OSM by Savan Sharia. Savan? Hello everyone, I am Shaun Shariar from Bangladesh. I am here present the users of native languages in OSM. Actually, native languages why important in OSM? Usually, users of map is just better for everyone. Uh, but as an underdeveloping country like Bangladesh, the literacy rate is not much in percentage uh, and in the remote area, if we go to the remote area, it is very low. There are many people who has difficulties to recognize an area that English description in OSM. Especially in the remote area, there are many people who didn't understand English as well as English map uh, effectively. So they can use the map with regular work in or in emergency situations like any disaster. You know, Bangladesh has uh, so much disasters occur uh, every year, but it is the problem to see the real scenario. What is the real scenario in Bangladesh? If you see the, uh, in Dhaka, if you see the Dhaka map, the capital city, uh, you have found uh, that Dhaka city has some Bengali description, but not more as per our local demand. But in the remote area or divisional area, we are really, uh, rarely see Bengali dis uh, description in OSM. As a result, in the remote area, mapping should not be testable to local people. And I believe that it is the common problem in the, uh, uh, all countries. What I want to do for that, uh, I want to input details in Bengali, as you know, uh, Bengali is the uh, Bangladeshi native language, and uh, as well as with the uh, English uh, languages like buildings, roads, uh, roads, POIs, I mean landmarks, uh, name will be in Bengali language uh, with English language also. Uh, example, if you see the that point is uh, in Bengali language is Ghunnizar uh, Ashtray Kendro in Bengali, but uh, in the uh, English name is Cyclone Center. You know, uh, our uh, remote areas, people doesn't know much more English. So if you see the Cyclone Center, they don't understand anything. So that's why I want to input that way that is the way to uh, uh, native languages in OSM. If you uh, add the native languages in OSM, uh, some advantage for the local people. So local people would jump up the uh, full interest on this platform. They uh, contribute more reliable data to the OSM and uh, uh, the OSM will be the proper used to the local people and maintain quality data. So the people is uh, know uh, what is that in locally. They have local knowledge. So if he, if he or she uh, put the Latin, uh, native language or put the uh, data in OSM, the uh, OSM data will be maintained pro, uh, uh, with quality and uh, as well as, uh, if we uh, 
uh, input native language, so uh, we can uh, reduce our, the vulnerability of any disasters. So uh, help uh, and also help the people who don't understand in English. So that's why uh, I want to show the uh, importance of uses native language in OSM. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Very good. Uh, we'll have questions later after all the lightning talks. Okay. So uh, next speaker will be. Oh uh, yeah, you get get this passed over to the next speaker. Uh, no, it's a uh, open solidarity. No, solidarity city map by Martin Over. Can you put the microphone on? All right. So again, Solidarity City Map by Martin Over. Yeah, hello, everybody. I want to introduce you to the Solidarity City Map. The concept behind the Solidarity City is that everyone is able to participate in city life, no matter what financial or legal status the person has. And with this simple web app on the left side, you will find such places. There are already many of such places mapped in other open data projects. First of all, of course, OpenStreetMap. So on a daily basis, the data is processed, the tags, public VLAN access points, toilets, showers, fitness stations, parks, libraries, free camping, caravan sites. And you, if you have any ideas what's left out, please get in contact. Then we have the fruit trees, bushes, and nut trees from Muntorp.org, or the public food storage places from foodsharing.di, and the repair cafes. The database should be extended in the future. If you have any ideas, please get in contact. And then we have a simple web editor available to map the more project-specific places, or better call events. I will give you an example. On the right side, you see the city of Düsseldorf. And here's the category of sport of the web app. There are over 20 categories available. And the northeast, marked in red, there are OSM fitness stations. And all other places are a temporary weekly sports event. The whole thing called Sport in the Park in Düsseldorf. And there you can many sports from aerobic from to Zumba, but only for a special time. So we have to leave these places all next week when the summer is finished. But I think these places fall in the best practice advice, don't map temporary events. You can click on the icon. In this case, is the uh, category medical care. And the pop-up opens with all the information available. If available, you can jump directly to the website, get in touch via mail, or ring them up. And on the bottom, we have the description of the place which could be quite special. And then we have a little legal note on the bottom, which brings us to the next point, the language barriers. Over 100 languages are supported, and whenever possible, uh, human translation are used. You could do them with the web editor. As a fallback mode, we have the Google Translation API. Ah, unfortunately, there was no open source alternative, especially when it comes to languages in the area of conflicts from the, conflicts from the Middle East. Uh, these lists were even extended in the ISO standard. KU stands for Kurdish, which is a meta language, and not Comanji like Google uses. And the two other main Kurdish languages, Central Kurdish, Zurani, and South Kurdish, Palawani, were added. So you could do translation these languages, but you cannot map originally in these languages because there's no fallback made available. In fact, a friend of mine is a native Surani speaking code, so most of the translation in the database are now in Surani. Let's have a quick look at the web editor on the right side. Here you could create places, edit them, or delete them, and do the translations. And besides other, other, other attributes like wheelchair accessibility, there is also an attribute if this place is already mapped in OpenStreetMap or not. So you can have a look at the data if this place is 
worth or not to map it in OpenStreetMap and do it by yourself. Last but not least, other thing is free data and software. The uh, data serve your REST endpoint as a GeoJSON and multi sense for maximal possible usage. So no problem to use this in OpenStreetMap in the one way. Then we have the Swagger Open REST API, a web mapping service, and all the code is on GitHub and based on open layers. So thanks a lot for your attention and I hope for contributions. You stayed very well in time. Thank you. Okay. Did you turn on your mic? Yeah. Can okay. you hear me okay? Yeah, great. Um, I've been informed I only have five minutes, not seven, so I'll probably have to come back and finish the presentation next year. Uh, my name's Sean Lynch, and uh, I'm the developer of Open Litter Map. Um, back in 2009, I was studying geography in first year university, and uh, I was introduced to GIS. And up until that point, um, you know, I was strongly interested in digital games. But when I was introduced to GIS, uh, my interest shifted dramatically from digital games to digital science. Fast forward a couple of years later, um, and there was this area near my house that's plagued by illegal dumping, burnt out cars, and antisocial behavior. And I thought, wouldn't it be very interesting if I could use GIS, put this data on a map, communicate it to educate society, and use the data to get it fixed? Um, fast forward another couple of years, and uh, after teaching myself how to code uh, in April 2017, after being inspired by OpenStreetMap, I thought, why not apply the same principles of crowdsourcing and open data to plastic pollution? And uh, Open Litter Map was born. Uh, so it's OpenStreetMap as a base layer, and then the litter data is layered on top, and it's all accessible as open data. You can download all the, all the data by country, state, or city. And uh, over the last two and a half years, uh, we've crowdsourced data from uh, you know, uh, nearly 2,500 people uh, across over 60 countries. Um, it's a, a web app that recently launched on iOS, as well as the global map. You can click on the World Cup, where we have the countries of the world competing against each other. And if you drill down through the country, the state, and the city, with a smaller amount of data, we can render more sophisticated maps. So this is a weighted hexagonal grid map. Um, on the left-hand side, that's uh, Skibbereen in Ireland. In the middle, you have Vasnar in the Netherlands. And uh, on the right-hand side, that is Cigarette waste or smoking related waste, cigarette butts mostly, outside the Bundestag in, uh, in Berlin. I think I pronounced that correctly. But you can notice that you can toggle the layers by behavior. So you can see where is the alcohol related litter occurring, where is the coffee related litter occurring, what brands are responsible for their products rotting in the environment, where is the smoking related litter occurring, etc. So as I mentioned, uh, we have the countries of the world competing against each other in what I call the Litter World Cup to see who is creating the most open data on plastic pollution. Um, and when someone uploads to Open Litter Map, I take the address of, uh, that we have an open street map at that value, and I use those values to populate the database dynamically. So if your location doesn't exist yet, simply by uploading, you'll automatically include your location at the, uh, the Litter World Cup where the countries of the world uh, compete against each other. Um, as I said, I recently uh, launched for iOS. Uh, I've yet to push this colorful update, but um, uh, we're soon to launch on Android. But as you can see, the user takes a photo of litter, tags what litter uh, is in that photo, and you can tag any amount of litter in, in a single photo, and then uploads that, which will render the data automatically. I should also add that I manually verify all of the data in each image uh, to remove any ambiguity from citizen science data, but also to gather really high quality data for machine learning, which I'm studying at the moment. You know, we have data for streets, but what we don't have is the data for, you know, what's on those streets in terms of litter and plastic pollution, and we don't understand yet how that moves over time or how it's entering the ocean. And in fact, the, the cities that we live on are designed to facilitate what I call the illusion of urban cleaning. So you can see here that potholes, grids, storm drains, while they remove rainwater, they also remove uh, a lot of litter from the environment as well. And an interesting experiment you can do is just take a glass jar and pop some cigarette butts in there, and watch that water, water quality change. This will give you a rough idea of the effect that smoking litter has on our water. 
Up until now, plastic pollution has been largely characterized as a marine phenomenon. It's estimated there's about 916 tons of plastic going into the ocean every hour, and we don't really even know where it is. Data is significantly lacking. And although it has a significant impact on the marine environment, we need to be more proactive and go upstream and communicate plastic pollution where people live, because this is a much more um, interactive and uh, it's a closer to home approach that has the potential to change human ins institutional behavior. I've also invented LitterCoin, which is the first blockchain token rewarded for the production of geographic information. So I applied the principles of proof of work from Bitcoin uh, to citizen science for the first time. But let me tell you what LitterCoin is not. It's not an ICO money grabber. It's not meant to be listed on any exchanges. It simply rewards proof of work for open data and geographic information. And I want to try and use LitterCoin to pay people to create geographic information. And I believe this has the potential to incentivize the most rapid production of crowdsourced data the world has ever seen, potentially leading to a situation where if people could get paid to do it, it could lead to you know, a global production of open data in about 15 minutes. Uh, and in the future as well, um, open litter map is not currently open source, but that's the plan. But, uh, and in the future, people will be able to vote on every part of the ecosystem through a decentralized autonomous organization. So to close, um, I'm looking at, this is a call to action. Currently, I'm doing all this by myself, but I'm launching several working groups today. So I'm looking for people to volunteer and to contribute to uh, software development, mostly PHP, JavaScript, and, uh, block and uh, machine learning. Second working group, um, if people would like to contribute in terms of community development, I'm looking for local and national coordinators uh, for marketing, et cetera. Third working group is research. How do we use the data? How good is it? How statistically significant is it, et cetera? And finally, a management committee for um, oversight and uh, future direction of the platform. Um, so that's Open Litter Map. Thanks for listening, and I hope you join me in Map the World's Plastic Pollution. We're coming now to the last speaker. And so we have to talk now, map to end female genital mutilation, and the talk is given by Jenna Chapman. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Okay, so um, I've been um, a volunteer with Tanzania Development Trust for the last six years. Um, I normally spend about two months a year in Tanzania, and I very quickly realized that there's very much of Tanzania, like many African plate countries, that are very, very poorly mapped. So for the last four years, we've been mapping uh, rural Tanzania in an initiative called Crowd to Map. Um, and one of the reasons that we're doing that is to help protect girls from female genital mutilation, FGM. And for people who don't know what that means, um, I've put the four main types here. And it's a big issue in certain parts of Tanzania, particularly um, because it's a tribal issue. It's um, an, an issue in um, the northeast, particularly. So we're working with local activists on the ground in Tanzania um, to help them map their communities to better protect these girls, and girls like the ones here. So we're working with a re really amazing FGM activist, um, particularly this woman, Roby Samwelly. Um, she was cut against her will when she was 13, nearly bled to death. Now she does outreach work telling people about the dangers of FGM, and her work was really hampered by the fact that she didn't have access to maps of the surrounding area. Um, she org organizes two safe houses, but um, girls couldn't find the safe houses and safe house staff, and the police can't find the girls. So much of rural Tanzania, still looks like the picture at the top, um, whereas places um, like Dar es Salaam are extremely well mapped, particularly through initiatives like Romani Huria that have done a lot of mapping there. And I know there's people in the, gr in the room here that have contributed to that. So activists in rural Tanzania need maps for many reasons, um, to protect girls from FGM, but also for more general community development. 
So t Crowd to Map has been going for four years now. We've got around 11,500 online volunteers who are from all over the world um, that are helping map from satellite images to do a base map. Um, so these are some of the places where they came from. Um, and so far we've added around mm, 3.6 million buildings um, into OpenStreetMap using the um, hot tasking manager. And these are some of the areas where we've particularly mapped. So mostly for against FGM, but also for more general um, community development. And um, we've also used MapSwipe, um, an app. To, how many people know about MapSwipe? Oh, excellent. Developed here in Heidelberg. Uh, so MapSwipe has been helpful for identifying the places um, that, that need mapping, where there are buildings. Um, so using the tasking manager. Um, we've also taken open government data, such as school locations and clinic locations, and um, put that into OpenStreetMap. So by copying manually the um, latitude and longitude and then looking at a satellite image and thinking, does that look like a school? If so, then labeling it as that, um, like this. Um, we have a Slack channel of over 3,000 members now, and it's been really, really successful in giving immediate feedback to new mappers. The vast majority of the remote mappers have come from the UN online um, volunteering service, and most of them are completely new to OSM, had never heard of OSM before. So this is a really good way of, of having some more advanced mappers who will give them immediate feedback on their first edits so that they can Im Im improve. But we're also working with people on the ground in Tanzania. So we're training them to use um, uh, the um, maps.me, um, a free app that uses OpenStreetMap data, which is fantastic for routing, um, but also you can add data. So people um, in, on, in Tanzania are adding points such as um, school names, village names, water points, um, et cetera. Um, and thanks to Ilya, who I think is here, who's helped us a lot with that. Um, so better maps have helped over 3,000 girls find safe houses um, and coincide with a reduced FGM death rate. Every year, girls bleed to death and their bodies are thrown into the bushes. But having better maps is one way of helping protect them. So we've trained over 1,600 local activists in many different areas of Tanzania, um, around 40% of uh, female. We've had support from Humanitarian OpenStreetMap as um, a microgrant two years ago, and also with NetHope, which allowed us to get um, sm uh, cheap smartphones. Generally, in these communities, people don't have access to smartphones, particularly women, so that was extremely helpful. Um, last year, we were invited to organize a mapathon at the United Nations General Assembly by UNFPA, and uh, we also had satellite events in many countries, um, and I think some of the people here um, helped with that, so thank you very much, and these are some of the events. So, um, it's an ongoing initiative. Um, it's very easy to make real difference to people in Tanzania, so if you're at all interested, please get involved and help us. We particularly need people to help with um, validation and feedback to new mappers, uh, to train them to become you know, better mappers in the future. So, thank you. Thank you very much. So, we have a couple of minutes. To, for questions to any of the four Lightning Talk presenters. Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, he, he gets the mic now. But you were next. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the great talks. I just had a quick question at the Solidarity City map. Uh, how does it go with integration with other countries outside of Germany? We haven't seen any of that, so it's just a very general question. Yes, worldwide. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> My question is also about Solidarity, Solidarity City map. 
and uh, it's about uh, when you are talking about uh, those uh, languages that are not supported and there are multiple uh, Kurdish languages like Northern Kurdish, Southern, uh, like, uh, when you don't have a translation for one of those languages, uh, how, how is it, like, uh, do, do you switch to the next closest language? Uh, this is very, no, no, definitely not. Uh, the Kurdish language, they can't understand each other and they have different alphabets, even Persian and Latin. Uh, it's really complicated there. Um, uh, you can do translations in these languages, in these newest languages, but you cannot map originally a point. You must do it in another language because there's no uh, fallback mode available. <laughs> 